Welcome back to A Bard's Life. This is how to plan a D&D game, or how I plan a D&D game. So the few pillars that I start with are, <laughs> is TT ill as AF? So let's go over what those mean. Starting with IS, you want to start with inspiration and setting. So for me, my inspiration is going to be what a terrible night for a curse. I absolutely love Castlevania. I always have. And that moment when you hear the did it, did it, did it, did it, it, it just gives you like this feeling of dread. It is too late. And I want to bring that to my game. The setting is going to be one I've used before. My players don't know this yet, but it's Black Sun. Um, if you've known me for any time or you jump on any live streams, we're going to eventually mention Black Sun. It was an 18 month campaign, it was beautiful, and it had a conclusion. It actually ended and the plot wrapped up. All the players were happy and yeah, I'm tangenting. So on to the next one, the TTs. The double T is tone and theme. So what is your tone? Mine is gonna be dark fantasy horror, which is basically just horror except with fantasy. Um, I want to use a classic medieval setting, kind of like D&D, just so everyone's aware of what to expect and they kind of know it's magic. There's monsters, there's yada yada. So I don't have to break that ice to them. It also lets them know there's no guns and things like that, so their expectations are kind of baseline. So the theme, without a tangent, the night turns everything into, into a monstrous world until the sunlight returns to push it back to normality. So, the players are going to have to deal with doing things on either a timeline or finding a place that they can hunker down and hope like hell they don't get caught. It puts a natural timer on it as well as, yeah, just environmental suspense, which that means it's built into the game and built into the system. It works for my genre. You want all of these points to actually line up and go towards that inspiration and tone. So if something's not dark fantasy horror or whatever you choose, then scrap it. Like work on it, come back to it. You wanna rework it. I also like to plan out the ill, the intro location. You don't wanna build out the entire world 100% because you'll end up just throwing away a book of knowledge because people will decide, oh, we're gonna screw up, piss off the whole country and have to hide in barrels and float off to another country because the mages are pissed off in this area. Yes, that happened in my thief campaign. They pissed off the wizard's guild and it was a nightmare. It was a nightmare. I had to basically delete the entire book. Don't do that. Start with micro. Before knowing your characters, all you can plan is a small town or whatever starting location. Small towns are very limiting. It keeps it Altogether, if you do a large city, chances are they won't ever leave the city because there's too much to do, or they'll be bored with it and you'll waste a lot of writing, and then you just wasted a lot of writing. It's very disheartening. Mine is going to be the small village of Plum. I gotta add my notes, I did decide that. Plum. So, the small village of Plum is not warm to outsiders. Money and protect protective trinkets will open doors real or not, um, as far as the trinkets, if they're fake magic or just bullshit sold on the street. I'm planning to wait for the party to fill out more details. I've got a couple things written out, but those will be part of the pitch for saving time here. I'm just gonna leave it there. But you don't wanna write a ton for the intro location until you know your characters, so you know what you wanna build out. As far as the SAF, you want a stand-in antagonistic force. So who's the minion or monster or um, storm or whatever that's going to happen? Like, are your parents kicking you out of the house? Have you not paid rent and your landlord decided um, he's going to take it out of your stuff and you have to be a vagrant and leave? Like, what is the antagonistic force? I don't recommend using a big bad evil guy, BBEG, because if you throw the big evil thing right in front of them right away, there's no mystery, as well as they'll try to kill him right away. I've had so many 
big bad evil guys show up, and I'm like, oh, I want to show you the villain right away. And they're like, I shoot an arrow at him. Okay, well, he's like level 11, you're level 1, you just started. He gets mad at you. He says you're an asshole and ignores you and continues with his monologue, which feels terrible. Then they shoot another arrow. Then he gets pissed off and kills them. Or you have to force the issue and it feels terrible because he's like, oh, I'm just ignoring you because you're peons. It doesn't end well. Don't use your big bad evil guy right away. Use a stand-in antagonistic force. I like minions because then you can get pissed off at the motives or the actions of the big thing. And then later on reveal, oh, like later on as in like a couple sessions, don't wait forever. Later on reveal, it's part of the motives of something greater. It makes the world also feel much bigger doing this. So um, to, save your to save yourself a lot of time and effort, just start small, plan out something before knowing your characters to build your big bad evil guy off of. I was trying to pick out some stand-in forces and I'm like, okay, Dark Fantasy, I can either do monsters attacking at night. I've done that before though. I did that in Black Sun, so I'm not going to. Um, something with darkness, kind of a cliche of mine, but I can adjust it. I can make it different. Maybe they're out of lamplight fuel and they have to go out and get materials. Maybe it's something for the town, like bigger than that. Not really a fan of the fetch quest, plus they'll come back. Um, I'm trying to get people moving on a much greater trajectory. I want the people to have something happen where they're going to be pulled in, and that way they'll work together and get introduced to each other organically instead of just saying, oh, you look interesting, let's go fight monsters together. And then you've got this weird thing where they use meta, it doesn't feel good, and it's very forced writing because the players want to play the game together, therefore they'll fake role-playing, which I don't like. So I'm going to work around it. Um, the idea I settled on was... A new pet or a new baby makes a noise, I'm going to make it a baby, and the monsters are starting to break into that place. So, the party is safe, they can choose to be forced into action, which they will, and these heroes will leave their safety, they'll go and save that family, um, hopefully they roll well, otherwise people have done dumb shit before in intros, I'll leave it at that. They're going to pull the kid back to their building, which is something with a soundproof cellar, which brings me back to Castlevania. Um, Simon Belmont found certain traders in basements, like he found secret hidden compartments below houses. I'm a little chummed with myself that this pulls back to the inspiration. Um, so we'll do that, which means a business or something like that has to take care of the party. Like, that's where they'll stay that night. So I'll work that in somehow, but I'm not sure yet. But yeah, that's what I've got for planning the game. Next up is the invitation. And that gets a little tricky because there's a few moving parts to that and it's player-based, so you have to kind of work with a moving system. Anyways. <laughs>